Hello, this is Jeff, and this is a lesson on the lesson tool in Moodle. Uh, in this lecture, I'm going to look at why you would want to use the lesson tool, what's, what it's good for, how it's different from the quiz tool. In the next lecture, I'll look at the basic setup of the lesson, and then in lecture three, I'll look at how you add pages to it. And finally, in lecture four, I'll look at the most complicated part, but also the part that is the real strength of lessons, which is making lessons react or adapt to your students' answers and change their behavior by using branching. I'm going to start out by just talking about what we even mean by lesson, because the word lesson has a rather vague meaning. In my own teaching, I use them to have students go through material before class and check their understanding so they arrive at class ready to work on things. But you can use lessons for lots of other things. You can actually use them sort of as quizzes, although they're not very well suited for that and you're better off using the quiz tool. But you could use them during class for activities, you could give assignments using them, and so on and so forth. So all we really mean by a lesson here is a thing online that has content pages and questions where the content pages deliver information and the questions are used to provide feedback. And it's not necessarily something intended to be done all in one sitting. It's possible that the students might start it, get partway through, go away, do something else, and come back later and finish it. The simplest structure would be some sort of alternating string of content pages and questions. But one of the real strengths of lessons is that they can branch. So, for example, you could have a menu page and give various ways into different parts of the material in the lesson by having some branching going on. Before I go any further, I want to head off a misconception that I might be creating with this lesson or any other lessons of mine that you might have seen. I'm tending to embed videos on the content pages. There's no need for that, and you shouldn't feel if you're building lessons that you have to use videos. I'm using videos because I'm an insufferable show-off. My earliest lessons just had references to textbook sections. A content page would typically say something like, read sections 2.2 to 2.3 in the textbook. Or you could type a whole lot of text, or give images, or perhaps provide sound files. There's no limit to what you can put on the content page, they're just a place to provide content. In some ways, the lesson tool looks a bit like the quiz tool, especially to a user taking a lesson or taking a quiz, and so it's worth contrasting them. The quiz tool delivers pages in a sequence, or if you set it up differently, it will deliver the pages randomly. Note I'm saying pages, not questions, because in fact a quiz tool can deliver pages that are not questions, content pages, just like a lesson tool. On the other hand, the lesson tool delivers pages in a customizable way. You can have it deliver them any way you want, including having choices. The quiz tool is really good at generating a mark, and it has a lot of possible ways that it can generate the mark, so you can customize that. The lesson tool is really not very good at generating a mark. It's often hard to interpret the marks it gives, and so on. So it really isn't for summative evaluation. Lesson tools are great for delivering material and for doing formative assessment. The quiz tool has a lot of question types, and in fact, uh, there are a lot of extensions that can be added on to Moodle to add special purpose question types to the quiz tool. The lesson tool is much more limited in the question types because while it is intended to deliver questions, that's not its primary purpose. So note, these two things at the bottom are advantages of quizzes, and they might make you feel that quizzes are just better. But they have different purposes. 
This advantage of being able to deliver pages in a customizable way is actually a huge advantage because it's what allows you to set up lessons to be reactive or interactive so that they deliver pages to some students, which those students might need, but don't bother delivering those pages to other students, and so on. The simplest structure you could have would just be some sort of linear structure like this, and in fact, this can be done perfectly well in the quiz tool. On the other hand, as soon as you have any branching going on, there's no way you can do that with the quiz tool. Now you're looking at something you would need to use the lesson tool for. And you can make your branching considerably more complicated. You can have additional levels of branching, and so on and so forth. The real strength, though, is that it can be responsive or interactive, so that, say, if students were answering a question and they got the right answer, they would proceed on in the lesson. But if they get one wrong answer, they would be taken, perhaps, to a supplementary question that would help them understand what they have misunderstood and then bring them back. Or another answer might bring them to a different supplementary question to address a different misconception. Because lessons are so diverse, and you could use lessons for a lot of different purposes, there's not a lot of specific advice I can give you about how to plan lessons. But I think there are two points that probably apply most of the time. You should think about what the entry points are into the material, and give easy access to those points in the branching of the lesson. And you should think about where there are breakpoints where you should give feedback, because that's going to tell you where you should put questions in the lesson. So in my case, I primarily use lessons as pre-readings to prepare for the class. And so I think of them as being used a lot like a textbook. So I set the entry points up so that basically everything is divided into sections similar to textbook sections. And then I'll put at least one breakpoint per section to keep the students engaged. But whenever I encounter a difficult or important concept in the material, I'll tend to put a question there to check the student's understanding. But of course, this will all be different if you're building an assignment using the lesson tool, or a lab, or an in-class group activity, or whatever it is you're building. Once you've planned out the lesson, though, unless it's got a very, very simple structure, it's probably a good idea to draw a map of it. Here is a map of this lesson, and at the moment you are here. If you're going to draw a lesson map, you might consider doing it up nicely in a computer application and then providing it to the students, perhaps on the main menu page of the lesson.